Hey indie game fans! Between the release of the latest entry in the long-running franchise Gears 5 and the controversial Borderlands 3, many indie games, rightfully so, have gotten the hell out of the way. But we do have some interesting and long-anticipated indie games as well, with one title in particular standing head and shoulders above the rest. So here are the top 5 best new releases of the week. Rabisco is an adorable action puzzler where you have to avoid hazards while searching for the moon's lost stars. While it looks simple, this quickly becomes insane timing-based challenges which requires you to move just in time to avoid hazards and to collect the stars. And if you, like me, used to frequent Flash Games websites, this is inspired by the world's hardest game, which has a similar concept but much more minimalist in look. I love how most of the obstacles and background characters have little faces on them, which is just so cute, which is certainly one way of getting my attention. Unreal was covered recently and is a co-op multiplayer game where you must work together with your friends to gather resources and to continue to lay out train tracks so that the train does not get derailed. I like the voxels used, very in line with the whimsy of the title, and the ability to add additional upgrade wagons to the train seems like quite the hook to keep you playing. My only concern is that this seems to be a little too arcadey, with getting the high score being the only long-term goal, but it does seem like quite the enjoyable experience. Churchgoers got my attention due to the colour scheme and the visuals, with ample use of green and orange, as well as its description, which says that this is a turn-based RPG where it's never your turn. You are on a quest to avenge your sister who was murdered by a priest of ash, and the character designs and world seem so surreal and weird, giving me a little bit of that Hylix vibe. Combat, if you can call it that, seems to be taking place on a grid, where you have to avoid enemy attacks, very Undertale style, so yeah, very curious about this.
time for the retro throwback of the week. Sydney Hunter and the Curse of the Mayan is an 8-bit action-adventure platformer that looks very much like its retro inspiration, absolutely nailing the look. This has you fighting through a Mayan pyramid to collect the pieces of the Mayan calendar, which was destroyed by an evil deity. This really does bring me back to my childhood, along the lines of something like Elwa's Awakening, and there appears to be a ton of secrets and hidden areas, as well as boss fights, at least one of which pays tribute to the Blue Bomber. You guys know me, the pixel art is on point and is excellently done, not so much high bit, but yet still intricately detailed as well. Here we are on the cusp of the release of the long-awaited Blasphemous. As evidenced by my release date hype video, I'm very much looking forward to this dark fantasy Souls-like action platformer, which may or may not actually be a metroidvania per se. Successfully kickstarted in June 2017, this, very surprisingly, comes to us from developer The Game Kitchen, best known for their horror point-and-click adventure game series, The Last Door. So a departure in genre, but not in the spooks. Play as the penitent one, the sole survivor of the massacre of the silent sorrow, trapped in what amounts to purgatory, in this nightmarish visage of death and religious motives, questionable headgear aside. There are equipment, relics, rosary beads, sword, hearts, and prayers to boost your stats, and even RPG elements with a skill tree and abilities, so one can certainly see the Dark Souls influence. This looks to be just as brutal and grotesque, with fantastic high-bit pixel art, and really should win some award for excellence in visual design. So here's hoping it lives up to the hype, taking the number one spot of the week. For more upcoming indie game new releases, check out the previous video or click on the recommended playlist and I will see you after the jump.